Good evening, spirits and specters and cutie ghosts, which is apparently, is that what those are called? Or is that just what some, is that just- Oh, I thought you were just calling me that. (laughs) I was referring to in chat, because right now I'm still looking at chat before every window in the world covers up my other monitor and I no longer see chat. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Philip and I'm the Dreadmaster of Blood from a Stone, a tale of horror. Wait, actually, a tale of love and dread in RPG. I almost never say that, but that's what it is. Um, We are so excited about tonight's game, uh, despite um, being down two players. But that's okay, because... mm, I don't know if you saw last week, but things uh, shifted pretty considerably. And uh, a spell was performed. Two characters uh, have effectively departed. Um complicating things and also making things very exciting. Um, before we jump into the game uh, and get into this, I'm so excited to kind of to kind of uh, see where things go from there. Um, before we jump into this, I want to say thank you to Let's Try Dat and The Boys Play D&D for rating us recently. So uh, follow those accounts because uh, they were nice to rate us. Um, I also want to say, in case you haven't heard, uh, from the constant posting I'm doing about it, we have a Kickstarter. Woo, long lost noir. Ooh, look hey. at the pictures behind me. Uh, the noir illustrations. Um, the Kickstarter is uh, uh, Lauren. Can you do? I think it's. I think it's the. I don't know how Nightbot works, but there's a command. There's a Kickstarter command that'll put the link in chat. Um, and so I definitely. Yes. Uh, yeah, please go over there. Uh, uh, back our Kickstarter if you haven't already, or and if you have, and you know someone who you think might like it, um, like send it to them because we need to get. Um, we are not funded yet, and we're hoping that we fund by the end of it. I think it's exclamation mark first, maybe. You know, probably. Um, but not only that. Here we go. Um, we have just put something up on here that's kind of almost really an experiment. Um, kind of a, an, an additional reward that's a little, uh, a little different than some of the other ones. Um, we actually are already out of, um, uh, everyone who's trying to, like, we had five of availability to name a spell. We're out of those. Um, there's still a couple of spots left for people who want to name a magic item. If you want to kind of back at the crazy high level, which... I mean, only do that if you want to. I, I'm, I'm surprised people backed at that level, to be honest with you. Um, we just threw it out there to see what would happen. Um, we have, however, put up another option, and this is an add-on. So if you have already um, backed this project, um, and I'm 99% sure it is already live, if you've already backed this project, um, you can select an add-on to the project. There is only one available to name the bartender in the speakeasy of session one of Long Lost Noir, Gray in the Dark. Mm. Um, that is a, it's basically an add-on. There's only one available, so you can do that. It's, it won't only be naming, like I'll talk to you about like like like, like race, vibe, Did they, maybe they used to be an adventurer, if so, what class they are, all that kind of, you know, we'll, we'll get into all that kind of stuff. Um... And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll try to, if somebody gets that before that game happens on Tuesday, that's February 1st, um, then we can do that. Uh, that is largely because in our, in our session zero, our chapter zero we did last week, um, I kind of put it to the, to the party, which in, in a way I don't often do. And I said, how do you guys want this game to be set up? Do you want to already know each other? You want to meet each other? You want to, you know, we kind of kick stuff around. And, uh, and uh, Ka was like, how about we meet in a speakeasy, which is, you know, the noir version of meat in a tavern and uh i've never done a game where the party meets got it it's fine um never done a game where the party meets in a uh in a tavern before so that'll be a fun thing so if you'd like to uh name that tavern keeper uh go to like manage rewards if you've already backed and i think you can get that add-on to uh to name that person so yeah that's just a crazy uh Crazy possibility. I don't know. We're just experimenting with that as a way to maybe try to try to get more get more funding for this crazy book, because um, it's going to be a lot of fun if we're able to illustrate all these races and classes and magic items and all that fun stuff. Um. So yeah. So that is uh, that is my pitch for that. I'm sure I'll do another one at the end of today's game because my goodness. Um. But for now, let's cast our minds toward Blood from a Stone. 
Um, last session. Despite in and out of game being given every warning and indication that it might not be the best idea. Sister Mercy Magdalene and S.A. Rawlings, a cultist, performed a song. A song from a book and lyrics that they had found from another domain across the mists. A play called The Tear-Stained Diamond. A Tome of Dread. It's sort of book and lyric and sheet music. They played a song called The Score Is Worth More. Conrad and Siobhan were nearby, their ears plugged with wax so as not to hear, having having read, uh, Conrad at least, having sort of heard the tale of the laborer's account, so deciding that he, he really thought this was risky. They also performed this outside in a dread gazebo, far from the house, hoping to, you know, not have Polly off herself in some really upsetting way. Everyone would yell at me about when I would be like, I told them not to do the spell. In any case, the spell worked, but both Sister Mercy and Mr. Rawlings did not win the battle of wills with the entity they contacted from another plane, from another domain. Both of them felt an immediate compulsion to get to Wendon and to find a bank vault, both of them having been told that different things they wanted above all else could be found there. Sister Mercy's case, it was a piece of the devil that could banish all evil from the land. In the case of Rawlings, it was books that can talk back and explain themselves, including, he was promised, a superior copy of the Book of Thirteen. To the one that is even kept in, like, you know, in Wendon and in the archives of the National Library. They both left immediately. Conrad, for his part, saw in the water one of the land, uh, one of the groundskeepers, a landscaper, floating face down, having drowned himself upon hearing the music, having been a bit further around the pool. And before Conrad could even say anything about it, the man's body was sucked down into the dark water. And Conrad saw for the briefest moment a black horse below the waves. Sarah Quill is uh, kind of convalescing in a bed. It's going to take her a few days to be to be sort of up and around, but she can she can still converse. Um, Mr. Dowell spent this morning not in good shape. He was very disturbed by the events of the last night. Conrad, you have yet to share what you've said with anyone, and you don't really get much of an opportunity to, because both Rawlings and Sister Mercy have run off. Siobhan has said she needs to check on Polly, suddenly fearing that everyone might riot if anything happens to Polly, as I was just told in I still have chat up. This is uncommon for me. Um, so, Siobhan has run off to see to Polly. Conrad, you are alone outside. And obviously, kind of, there's, you know, the overarching plot of this game and everything. And you guys came here to try to find this woman, Darla Quicklime. And now you're at this house and there's a, there's an, an you met an angel last night and he flew off when he saw a doll. A lot is going on. But before we go any further and begin tonight's game, I must read the invocation. Out. Out are the lights, out all, and over each quivering form. The curtain, a funeral pall, comes down with the rush of a storm, and the angels, all pallid and wan, uprising, unveiling, affirm that the play is the tragedy, man and its hero, the Conqueror Worm. <laughs> so. There are three of you. 
the dread clock stands at five. Everyone, please roll me a d100. Oh no. Doing the um, increasing our. Oh, that's thing. true. I suppose we should increase stats. I think that would probably only be for Dowell and Conrad. That's what I always forget. That's the little thing I always forget to do. Sarah Quill, what is it? An 80 for Dowell. Seven. Seven for Sarah Quill. Conrad. 64. 64. 64. Nintendo 64, Conrad. Very good. All right. Um, before we continue there, then, yes. Uh, Dowell, if you have anything to improve, let's go ahead and roll those. Yes, um, I have marked... And Conrad, if you have anything to improve, you can prepare to do so as well. If you checked anything last week. Um, I don't even think I rolled anything last Sarah, week. Sarah, the only roll you made when it was still Sarah was to uh, try to uh, attack a man. And you rolled and a f- fumble. So yeah. you have not. Succeeded. You know what I could improve on, though, is hit points. Can I, <laughs> can I roll to improve? Uh, actually... A day Ooh. has passed. You have received medical treatment. Let's see how much okay. you get back. Uh, Dowell, how are you doing on your... Uh... Uh, I have spot hidden and psychology month. Let's roll for spot hidden. All right, so I have to beat a 57. Beat a 57. You have to... And 26. 26 is under 26. Right. You are under, yeah. so this is so, the one case where yeah. you want to roll higher. So sadly, didn't. so yeah, nothing for that. Um, and psychology is at sixty; just have to go higher than that. All right. That one is a sixty-six. So that's above. So I do roll through that one, right? Yes, but we've changed something in honor of. Uh, I believe this was a book and dagger suggestion. Roll a d thirteen. No. Oh, so you please. you actually can you can you can improve a larger amount, but if you roll a thirteen, oh yeah, give me a th- you want you I know you want to give me a thirteen. I can tell that you do. Okay, thank God it oh, it's it's sat on thirteen and rolled back. Um, yeah, uh, eleven. You get eleven points. So. Well cool. done. For psychology. Yes, well done for yeah. not getting a thirteen. All right, thank you, uh, Conrad. How are you looking? Uh, I wasn't listening. What did you did? So you didn't you didn't check anything last week? Oh no, I checked nothing. I, I understood. Yeah, I, I was listening. Sorry, I thought it was something. No, else you're good. You're good. Um, Sarah Quill, please yes. roll a Constitution roll for Sarah Quill. Okay. A thirty-four, which is a success, a, a hard success. Okay. You get two hit points. Oh, thank you. You're you're a kind and benevolent. You got you. Uh, it would have been more had it been an extreme, but there you go. Well, I know, but um, you know. <laughs> the minute you say. Oh, fine. you know what? No. Or do I get roll, more? Pull pull out sister pull up sister mercy real quick. Okay. Technically. Uh, make a medicine roll for Sister Mercy. This is just kind of her general ministration she's done to you before. You know, she went crazy and ran away. Oh, oh, a medicine? Mm-hmm. Is it, oh, a seven? Again. So it's a success. Which is an extreme success. There's no difference in, in success level for this. Okay, in that case, please re-roll for Sarah. You can roll for your con roll. Uh, you get a bonus die, so roll your tens column one more time. Okay. Two. Does that get you to an extreme success on your con roll? Oh, because you had a thirty something, right? Now you have twenty no, something. No, it doesn't. Still okay. No. Then yes, you you only you only healed as much as you did, and you are still you still have that major wound. I will accept it. Okay. Um. Yeah, you kind of have to. That's. That's the rules. So, uh, good times, everybody. Um, but we do begin based on these rules. We always go sort of to the lowest. So, Sarah Quill. Yes. You awaken, feeling a little. I mean, you still feel terrible. You have multiple, you know, openings in your head. 
but you are um, you're awake. You notice there's no a rage. Of, I mean, you are you are in control of your faculties. You also have the most just pleasant taste in your mouth. Can I swipe my lip and see if there's anything on my lip? Sure. Make a, make a spot hidden roll. I should really use different dice for this. Or use those, and it's funny. Well, <laughs> uh, no, fail. Not, uh, not humble. Um, you notice even without succeeding that there is some blood like on your on your gown, but okay. you don't, and you don't feel any on your face, Siobhan cleaned it, but uh, you don't notice anything. Um, it's not surprising you drank deeply, um, but at this moment you just feel kind of good. You just feel kind of you don't. You certainly don't feel the need to murder anyone at this exact time, and you generally feel kind of like everything's gonna be okay. Your mind okay. goes for a moment of just beautiful people dancing in masks. It's an interesting idea. Like they were doing this dance where everyone kind of almost dominates one person. You know, and it's sort of fun. It's sort of there's a part of you that isn't sure if it's more fun to be the person everyone's pulling on or one of the people doing the pulling. That's something you'll have to decide for yourself. In any case, there is a bell next to your bed. Uh, I guess I'll also mention, yes, uh, uh, Sarah Quill, um, two sessions ago during the dread storm, had a vision of a vampiric masquerade. And she filled her mouth with something. Uh, what would you like to do, Sarah Quill? I would like to ring the bell. Understood. My bed. You ring the bell. Um, not long thereafter, actually, Siobhan kind of looks in on you, um, having been in the next room with Polly, um, and she is going to sort of say to you, are you good? Is there anything you need? I, I just wanted to make sure that Conrad was okay. Okay. I, I know uh, that I... I'll see if I can, um, she, uh, she kind of, like, kind of calls down the hall. Um, Dowell, I'd actually like you to make a power roll. Nothing. <laughs> 58, under 75. Under 75, okay, then yes, uh, as it happens, um, around this time you sort of heard more sort of clamoring and, and, and voices in the halls, uh, you... You got dressed. You know, Hoggins is... I, I'm not sure if... You had stayed up in, in Conrad's room, um, so you're now putting... You know, or you might have gone down after everyone dispersed in the midst of the night. Um, Hoggins is, of course, like, recuperating from being shot. Uh, so you, uh, you know, understanding that you're, you know, like, like you're hearing distant bells ringing and voices and stuff, and you realize probably no one's out there, you now actually feel up to, to getting to work. So um, as you sort of step out... Um, you, you hear Siobhan asking about uh, Conrad and saying that Sarah wanted to talk to Conrad. She's kind of calling down from the hallway, and she'll she'll let you know that before she. Do I know where to find Conrad? Uh, no, you probably don't know where he is. Um, I, are you are you gonna ask? Are you gonna ask Siobhan? I'm not. A, yeah, I'm not aware of any, his whereabouts. I th he was last time I saw him. He was at the gazebo. 
Outside. Hmm. By the lake. And by the pool. Just, can you... Yes, of course. I'm not out um, there, so I can't drown you. She just goes into Polly's room. It's a bit soon for that. All right. Um, cool. so I don't that think she was joking. Fresh. I think she was yeah, just well. pointing out that since she's not there, she can't drown you right now. You're safe. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm going to go outside. Lovely note. Okay. Um, Conrad, what are what are you doing as uh, after Siobhan has left? You're kind of at this gazebo. Where are you going? What are you doing? Uh, can you describe how far away like the gazebo is to the lake? And the gazebo is on the pool. Um, okay. Kind of, there's like you know, like sedges and reeds and things kind of on either side of it. So it it's a very like secluded spot. Like you can sit in it and not see the house or kind of anything else. It's a very sort of picturesque area. Um, they purposefully kind of like put it behind some trees that kind of blocks the view of the house. Um, you can kind of, uh, beyond it is woods, but there's a pretty good clearing between where the gazebo is and where sort of the woods to the side of the house starts. Um, there's also woods on the far side of the pool, like from the house. You know, the house sort of, the back of the house looks out on the pool and there's this other set of woods kind of further beyond them. Um, the gazebo is probably slightly further than halfway along the pool, um, kind of around towards that back area. Um, so it's pretty secluded. It's maybe a five-minute walk, probably more like four, you know, to get back to the house from where it is. Um, Siobhan set off, and you, you you probably just stay there for a minute or so, just kind of, you know, pondering that they did this spell, they gathered up those books, and now they've just wandered away, and you're just here, and you, you saw something there in the lake. Yeah, I want to go toward the lake and explore, but um, a little more cautiously, because I, I, I don't trust what's going on in there. Perfect. Uh, so I want to just kind of look down where that guy blooped under. Understood. Um, I'll tell you what, you can, uh, I mean, you have, a, you have a sight to where it was, but if you want to kind of go around sort of some of the reeds and, and, and brush uh, kind of like on the side of the lake, you could, you could like walk for a minute or two around the side and try to sort of see where he even went in from. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'd so like to do. No rolls, that's a, that's a very simple kind of survival or, or navigating, but as you get to that side, go ahead and make a spot hidden. You very, you very well sighted gentleman, you. I rolled, uh, it's extreme success, I rolled a four. <laughs> that's an extreme success. Um, I mean, there's not, unfortunately, there's not really too much to reward it. I think a success would have told you much of what you would want to know. Um, I guess I'll say that you, you can spot the man's tracks, like, like all the way, you know, from like around the side of the gazebo. Uh, you can see where he was. You can see them moving around a lot based on levels and such. Well, uh, tell you what, throw with a, um, uh, you sort of see a lot of information with a bonus die, so roll your d10s twice. I would like you to make either a nature or survival or, or uh, you know, any kind of tracking check, anything that you think could be used as a tracking. Uh, I'll even look at your sheet and see if I can, you know, trying to give you a good advantage of this, but there is a degree here of, you know, what do you know about, uh, uh, you know, uh, survival... Track and survival both tens for you, so. Did you say to roll the 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 D ten or the tens? Uh, the D ten. Uh, sorry, the D tens. So like, the one that the has ten the tens column. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Um, forty six. So I don't think I. What was I? Yeah, you're only a ten in any yeah. of the relevant things, unfortunately. So you you nevertheless kind of you know whether it's natural survival or or whatever you 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 do a pretty good job of kind of looking in and and. You know, you, you can't you can't determine exactly how long each track's been here and where he walked over himself, but you can tell where he was walking. Um, you also notice kind of like cl closer to the lake, there are some uh, tools in a bag that have all just been like dropped. Um, and then you see his footprints go directly into the water. Um, mm. A little bit of kind of the sort of lakeside uh, flora have been disturbed slightly uh, there, kind of implying that he just kind of, you know, brushed in. But that is um, that is all you can really see. And then, of course, as you sort of look to the area where he went in, um, with a very good look, you know, kind of a, a little bit of sunlight pops in with your four. Um, you don't see his body 
in the relatively shallow area you saw him get dragged down. So you're pretty convinced that he has been further pulled. Uh, the silt there is still somewhat disturbed, so that's probably in keeping with how long ago you would you would think you saw something. Just I pick up a pebble and just kind of try to toss it in where I saw him fall in. Uh, this is the last thing you're going to get with your four. You watch the pebble. You somehow see through kind of the, the ripples and reflect, refracting light as the pebble just sinks below the water, landing in the silt about a meter or two below. It's lost to your view at that point. I, uh, it doesn't feel right. I'm going to uh, just go back toward the house. I don't think it's there's any hope in it getting this guy out of here. Understood. You walk around the side. Conrad. You hear a little whisper. Just so faint. Kind of on the wind. Pretty soft. Make a listen roll. That is a, I got a, a hard success. It's coming from the woods beyond the pool. Hey, uh, who said that? No response. I don't know if my mind's playing tricks on me. There's been some awfully bizarre Ooh. things happening here. Would you like to make a reality roll? Uh, a sure. reality check? That's that's a thing I in like this game. A reality check. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal with a reality check, my friend. You can do a reality check. If you fail, you lose sanity. So basically, a reality check is your attempt. Um, is you're trying to see if you heard what you heard, if it's real, if something's going on. You're basically trying to see, is my mind playing tricks on me, or is something crazy happening? Um, so would you like to make... And all, and all it is is you roll a sanity roll. If you fail, you um, you lose a little sanity. And the benefit of the benefit is like you that. know. Hmm. I mean, in Conrad's case, I feel like he knows that there's a bunch of weird stuff happening here anyway, and it doesn't matter whether or not it's his mind or what's going on. Fair enough. Um, it's you know, I, I think that uh, he's the type of guy that likes to be around people. And, you know, wants to head back to the house and, and find somebody to describe what he saw. Perfect. So, Conrad, you begin walking back around the side of the house. There's this feeling that somebody's watching you go. But you carry on. Poke my head out the back door. Mr. Dowell, at this point, uh, you would have looked at I me. Mean, you have to walk to the gazebo. It's purposefully set so you can't see it. So um, if you were walking to the gazebo. I will walk as far away from the pool as kind possible. Of giving the pool away. You, you sure enough actually see Conrad once you've kind of gone a couple, uh, a couple, uh, you know, a couple minutes away from the house. You see Conrad coming from like around farther from the gazebo and walking toward you. And the two of you can meet up within, you know, a minute. Mr. Bourgeois, oh. I've been sent to fetch you. Uh, Dal, hey, it's good to see you, man. Uh, there's been... It's hard to describe what just happened. Um, I'll just say a lot has happened, but uh, what are you looking for me for? Uh, Miss Quiddle's awake and she was asking for you. Sarah's awake? Yes. Uh, l let's go see her. Is, is she doing okay? Right this way, sir. I'll bring you to her. You were saying you saw something out there as we're walking in. 
Yeah, well, um, you know, the, the, the couple that we were with earlier, they, they tried to sing some song and things didn't go too well. Uh, yes, where where are they right now? Uh, they went to some place that starts with an M. I can't remember. Uh, a place that starts. You're not making much sense right now, Mr. Uh, it, it didn't make quite a bit of sense, but do you have a gardener out here that's typically cutting the weeds or tending to the flowers? Uh, I, I think I saw him go under in the in the. Do door. I know of a, uh, of a yeah? Of a, there's there's a few land you know a, a few groundskeepers you can think of for sure. That there are a few grounds. You saw him what? He uh, after they did the the song or spell or whatever it was, uh, he was face down in the water and he just disappeared. I, I went to go look for him and I didn't see anything. I mean, uh, I'm gonna it, look over his shoulder toward the pool. Do I see anything? Make a spot hidden roll. I just got better. I don't know. I got better at psychology. It doesn't matter. I still roll really well. Um, that is a 27, which is a hard success. The pool seems still. What little you can see below the surface, you don't you don't see anything. Perhaps we should hurry inside. Uh, it, yeah, might I mean, be a bit more dangerous than it seems, Mr. Bourgeois. Uh, you're telling me. I mean, let's go see Sarah. She's. I hope she's okay. Right away, sir. Bring you Sarah. Inside. Up the stairs, um, Siobhan kind of looks at you, Conrad, and Dowell from within Polly's room. Polly's just kind of sitting on the bed. They're talking about something. Siobhan has a look. She also has a doll in her arm. Sarah's room's the next one over. I just kind of look in, look at her, and look at the doll, and look at her, and know that something's not right. Hmm. But I want to see Sarah. Sarah's in her room. I approach. Uh, Miss Sarah, uh, how, how you doing? I'm right. I'm okay, I, all things considered, but I just wanted to apologize for, for trying to attack you. I wasn't, I, I knew that I wanted to hit something and someone so badly, and I knew that if I hit you, it wouldn't actually hurt. And, and I'm sorry for falling and for worrying you, but I, I never intended to actually hurt you. I just wanted to let you know that, and I'm so sorry. No, d don't don't apologize. I mean, we all go into blind rages sometimes. And, I mean, I've been known to punch a wall or two in my day, and... It, well, you, you know, see, I, just... I, I was afraid to punch a wall because I was afraid that would hurt. So I wanted to punch a person, but not hurt them, because I knew people are soft. And so if I would have punched you, it would not have hurt my hand and it wouldn't have hurt you, but instead I fell down and I hit my head instead. But I didn't want to hurt you. I just wanted to let you know that. Oh, Sarah, sometimes we we make mistakes, we're impulsive, and it's okay. Uh, I, I, you know, really what's more important is how's your head? I mean... Uh, it hurts, but the nun did an awfully good job at patching me up. I think I'll need a while longer to heal, but I think I'm okay for now. Though I did have the most peculiar dream. Well, I mean, first of all, it's, I'm glad you're okay. Uh, and I'm glad that nun did a number on your, on your head there, because uh, it wasn't looking too good, but... Uh, you said dream? Yes. Um, when? Was it last night? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. These <laughs> Just games, checking. man, these are full days, y'all. <laughs> no, it's been a couple weeks <laughs> since I've been there. Um, well, last night, I had a rather wonderful dream, oddly, considering everything that's been happening. It was a masquerade ball a very fancy place with the most beautiful people I've ever seen, except I couldn't see 
their faces because entirely because they were wearing masks and there was a, a strong looking blonde woman who was she the one being i i forget sorry the strong was she looking. the one Oh, the, uh, was, are you asking Oksana? Was she the one being in the middle? Oh no, or Oksana she... was drinking. Okay, that's what I thought. There was this, a strong looking blonde woman who was, and it sounds scary, but it, it was quite a beautiful sight. She was consuming the blood of another girl and she was surrounded by these beautiful beings who then moved forward as that they were going to do the same. And then I woke up with the most curious taste in my mouth. Well, that sounds like quite the dream. I, I mean, I've heard of, you know, some religions are a little strange. <laughs> sounds like maybe you had a religious experience, the nun, maybe Nothing. feared with all the blood you saw. Oh, I don't, I don't think that's a part of the religion that the nun is a part of, but it could be. She is rather beautiful and tall, but she didn't quite have the pallor of the people in the masquerade. Did you have a curious dream as well? I did, and I don't... I, I hope you don't mind me des describing what, what happened. It might be somewhat inappropriate, but... I was nearly assaulted by uh, a, a very uh, strong woman. Uh, nearly assaulted in the, the sexual way. Oh, and, goodness. Uh, and then there was this, this man made out of rock looking through the window at me. It, it felt like it was very, he was a voyeuristic type. And I, I don't know. And, and, you know, then I woke up and, save Mr. Dell here from getting shot or or stabbed. I, I mean, I shot, I shot somebody. Oh, goodness. Uh, Dow, you, you there? Yeah, yes. I mean, uh, Dow was very deliberately right? lurking in the door, like very far away from both of these people. <laughs> I'm crazy right D now. Yeah. Dow, t <laughs> tell her about how I saved your life. Yes, uh, Mr. Conrad uh, shot my colleague um, who was trying to stab me in the night. So, is he dead? Uh, no, he's recovering right now. I think he is, his mind was not his own. From what I, can tell. I can understand that. My mind has not been my own several times on this journey. So I, see that I can quite relate. Conrad, I'm glad that you have not shot me. I'm glad. I would only shoot you in the face with whiskey. Uh, I appreciate right? that. I, all right. Dowell, are you in the room or are you like fully in the doorway? I'm, I'm in the doorway, like literally in the doorway. I don't want to, I'm, I'm very paranoid right now, so I'm kind of trying to keep an ear out on the hallway as well as the room. Your listen is really high, right? It is a 99. Okay. Then you hear. Faintly, but assuredly for you, a footstep, then another footstep, then another footstep from the hall behind you. I'll turn to look. And you don't see anyone. Was it coming from Siobhan's room? No, it's coming from further down the hallway. You are looking, though. Go ahead and roll a spot hidden. Another hard success. The door up to the locked wing, the northwest wing, is currently open. And as you looked up, the footsteps stopped. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Bourgeois. Uh, yeah, Mr. Dell? Did anybody in your party return to the, to the wing? To, was it the west, the north wing? Northwest wing. Northwest wing. Um, I mean, no, the, uh, the, the nun and Rawlings, they, they 
took off. And I mean, Siobhan, maybe she went in there, but not not that I'm aware of. The door is wide open right now. Locked oh. door. Uh, and two, I know this was many weeks ago. You even recall that uh, Craven Gate was trying to bit like break that door down when he thought people were up there. He, of course, eventually right. came around when you know they they found you with the servants and everybody fell down, and that's where the judge died yesterday. So this door, as far as you know, the key is still missing. But the door is now wide open. Well, I know that Javon had the key. I don't think you did. I I did because I eavesdropped on them talking about it. Then you did. Very good. I know she did well at her hiding it, but if you heard that, oh, right, you hear everything. I well, you, hear so everything basically you tells. heard a footstep, footstep, you looked up, you heard, like, one more, like, and the footstep stopped. Well, I mean, you think, I mean, Walker? I haven't heard from Walker in a bit of time, I'm wondering if he's still around at all. I mean, you know, ghosts don't seem to leave ever. I mean, unless you footstep. save the place. Footstep. 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 Make a listen, Rolled Owl. <laughs> That's a three under 99. Footsteps are coming directly toward you. Um, I'll even say, because your listen is so good, you are able to look, and there's just minor little indentations all in the. I'm backing into the room with Conrad. Okay. Conrad, something is here. Uh, um, you have a weapon on you. Uh, I do. Uh, I. Good, Hold because on. I do not. <laughs> I don't either. I, I won't be much help here. As I you... was not counting on it, madam. Are you backing, like, deeply of... into the room? Yeah, can I look around for something like a handle, lava, or something? just something to wield as a weapon? Sure. I grab the bell. Sarah Quill's just in her bed. Skull partially cracked in a couple places. <laughs> clasping a bell. <laughs> Dowell is backed across the room. Conrad, what are you doing? I have my hand on my revolver. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, it's it's still holstered, but. After a moment. Do I find anything to wield as a weapon? Make a luck roll. I'm sorry, I meant to have you do that earlier and then we were. Uh, wow. Um, that's a 13. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <gasps> hallelujah, hallelujah. Didn't All right, even, kids. I didn't even connect. Now I got bad news for y'all. In the 13th session, because we were counting them for session 13, mm -hmm. I had them roll these. That's not fair. Well, they just, in fairness to them, they really, really wanted to. <laughs> so I'll tell you what we'll do. Because you're acting like that's unfair, that a horror search is going to happen now. But I really do think a horror search is going to happen now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to basically give the horror surge a little bit of a bonus die. I need everyone to roll a d13. In jail. And that includes me. Uh, still, I, it's still the, the... The I odds are still one. good that you won't roll a 13. Well, you know, whatever. I got a 1. And I don't know if that's good or bad. 11. So it's up Four. to me. All right. I'm back in jail. I need you. I need you right now. I need you now tonight, and I need you more than ever. Not a 13. Horror does not surge. Um, so, Dowell, you find a um, 
you find a uh, candelabra exactly like you wanted. I grab it off the wall on where where yeah, it's just, it is. It's on like, it's on like a, of... yeah, it's on like a little credenza or something. Sure, no problem. Um, after a few moments of just sitting there, a creaking footstep that all of you hear. As the sort of kind of, there's like a, the hallway is carpeted and then there's sort of a wooden section between and there's more carpet like under the bed in this bedroom. Creak. All of you hear it. Another creak. <laughs> footstep. Footstep. Dowel, they're softer now. Footstep. Footstep. Make another listen roll. Tell yourself. Oh. Listen. Uh, 87. 99. Okay, so that's a regular success. So you no longer yeah. have the exact sense of where this is. You still hear the steps. Um, the other two can actually also make uh, listen rolls if they want to be trying to hear what's going on. Uh, oh, maybe. Nope. 31. Regular fail. Yeah. It's a 31, not a 13? No. It's a shame. Um... <sighs> None of you can tell exactly where the footsteps are coming from. Dowell, you just sort of hear them kind of. Step, step. Well, don't tell them to show themselves. Wait, did I hear that? You did. He said it. Me? Yes, I okay. said that loud. Quite Don't clearly. tell them to show themselves. Maybe they'll just disappear if we can't look at them or something. Has that ever worked for you before, Miss Quill? Mm hmm. No, but I've also never been in this exact situation. So, I don't know. Have I, so. It, new for me, too. Uh, Walker, is that you? Bradford Walker. Dowell, you feel this chill on your sort of neck. And then as if somebody's whispering in your ear. This feminine voice, one that sounds familiar and yet one you can't exactly place, says, Footman, draw me a bath. Footstep, 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 creak, creak. Footstep, footstep. Moving away. And follow the footsteps. Mm -hmm. If you go out the door, you hear them once again moving towards the open door at the far end. Is this a good idea? <laughs> I will say this to you, Is there something Dowell. I can roll for? Huh. Something to roll if it's a good idea. Um, yeah. Complicated question. I'll tell you what you could. What are you going to say to me beforehand? <laughs> well, I want you to make a. Make because another. The player has an idea who it is, but I don't know how. How much would know. There is a sense from Dowell that this is familiar. It is odd, for sure. So, Dowell, I want you to make. It's not really sanity, it's. um, I think it's just power. Make another power roll. Um, that's a, a 50 under 75. Okay, so a success, not a hard one. Um, you kind of try to force yourself to remember, and all you know is that that voice is familiar to you. Um, should we... You haven't really revealed too much of, of, of information to the group, did you? I, I honestly don't remember what you said to them. I have not, no. Okay. Um, so I, 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 was... I know, I, I said what I knew about the lady of the house. Yes. Them. I'll phrase it like this. I'll, fr I'll, I'll phrase it to you like this with like a regular success. You have no memory of the lady of the house. But you're but pretty sure that's her. And you're pretty sure you do remember her. You just don't remember. 
but that was very familiar, and the way she called you footman was a little bit almost not like friendly, but like familiar. Familiar, sure. Was it what I'm saying, Lady Lorelai? Lorelai Lush. Lorelai. Lady Lush. I heard her voice. The. What'd she say? She said, Footman, draw me a bath. Uh, I, I want water, to... water around here is not uh, very good, from what I, I have surmised. I dumped a whole hat of Conrad's, uh, a whole hat of water on my head from Conrad's hat, and... Um, it wasn't a great experience. It was rather cold, kind of dirty, and just the water just, it wasn't that good. I wouldn't do any water around here. The the, the bathtub in there, I, I went in there, that's where I met Radford Walker, and he was, you know, he kept disappearing, and he told me if I wanted to take a bath, and basically said I wouldn't ever come back uh, if I took the bath, and, and it's linked to the lake somehow. Uh, I, I scooped I scooped a whole thing of water out of the bathtub in my hat and walked away and filled with swamp water. And I put it on my head. Mr. Bourgeois, Ms. Quill, I haven't told you this yet, but I have no memory of any time prior to four years ago about when the time Miss Lush disappeared. I woke up one day in this house and everybody called me down. I assumed my place as I was expected. I've been looking for answers ever since. I thought maybe you all could give me those answers, your investigation, but I just heard her voice, I remembered a person I had forgotten to see what she wants. And I'll start walking out the door. Well, D Dal, what, hold on a second. I, I mean, it's a bit impulsive, but I can understand the, the desire for knowledge and information. I mean, did you get bopped upside the head or something and you just woke up here? I mean, uh, you know. If I knew that, it, Mr. Bourgeois, I wouldn't be doing this. I, I try to grab his head and see if I feel any bumps on it. <laughs> Uh, God, maybe make here, a phrenology maybe. roll. No, um, <laughs> do a, uh, I think that would be a, um, medicine, <laughs> uh, medicine or bumps on it. I, I'll even, it's, it's, it probably is best. I'll, I'll give you a slightly better shot. Try a first aid. That's a zero. 100. Oh wait, no, z no, zero, zero, zero. Yeah, zero. that's a one hundred. Wonderful. Wait, is it? Oh yeah. There is no zero in on D one hundred. Wait, that's hey. a fumble. <laughs> no, there is. There's a zero. That's, it is because there's no because there's no like the numbers go no... from one to one hundred, not zero to yeah. ninety nine. Oh. So yeah. you have rolled a fumble. Now you cannot push a fumble. <laughs> no, no, it's a it's a one. It's a zero. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Conrad, you reach for Dowell's head. Oh. To see if you feel any bumps on it. Hmm, how am I going to do this? Um. <laughs> Conrad. You thought about this recently, it kind of entered your mind. Sometimes when people are suffering, what you do on the farm is you end the creature's suffering. And once again, this is putting itself in your mind, this thought, you're holding this man's head. And I mean, you had your revolver in hand a second ago, it's right there in your pocket. You know, you're kind of looking at him from the back like this. You could, you could, you, you know that you could put it just straight through the brain clean. He wouldn't feel a thing. That's what you do if he was a horse, you know. A 
horse that broke its leg. This man's spirit's broken. He wants to go up there. What's going to happen to him? He drowns. Conrad, I need you to make a power roll. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I rolled a hundred again. No! What does that mean? If right. My power is a seven. Double fumble. You fumbled again. But uh, you might want to use a different set of D100 if you have them. Actually, just kidding. Can you don't. push that roll? Putting them in the... Ca- oh, yeah. You can't, can I push? You, you can't push a fumble. I don't think okay. you can push a fumble. I'm putting I'll, these bad boys I'll, in the cage. Um, can you push a fumble? Uh, actually, that's a good question. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you cannot push a fumble. Shoot me in the back of the head is what's I happening. don't think you can. I'm pretty sure you cannot push... Uh, is Book he, here? He would know. <laughs> no, he he may not know of this one, honestly. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure fumbles are kind of like supposed to be this kind of. It's you know, it's a one percent chance it happens. All right, friend. Um, Dowell, you are a well. You're well endowed with ears. I need you to make a listen roll for. Uh, that's a 16. 16 is that ex- that would be extreme for you. So that would you be extreme. hear him like unclipping. Okay, in that case it is a full on. Which one of you has higher dexterity? What are your respective dexterity rolls? My dexterity is 60. I have 45. 45. All right, so Dowell, you actually can you can move first cuz Conrad is drawing a gun. And Conrad, you did, by the way, you you had a fumble on your power, so we're getting to that in a second. Dowell, what do you want to do? You get to take a move first. You can you can try to run away. You can try to like fight. You can try to like fight him into try to disarm him. What do you want to do? Um. Can I try to like hit the gun out of his hand or something? Yeah, that's it. That's that's yeah, that's like a disarm. Yeah. So Dow will go ahead and would you roll a a a fighting brawl and Conrad would you roll a fighting brawl? And in this case, uh, the actually Conrad, or you could do a dodge if you want to simply avoid avoid him. Then the tie would go to you. I I already rolled a fighting brawl. I rolled a seventy six, so I failed. Okay. I rolled a twenty four under twenty five. Mm, okay. So you managed to just kind of knock the gun out of Conrad's hands. What are you doing? Uh, am I? What are my? How are my faculties right now? You know, you're, you're, I'm not really in control of you, but you really think it's the right thing. Is There's a lot of suffering people in this room, Conrad, and this has just been bad. Dow and Sarah, mean, really? they're, it's just too much. Are we on an upper floor right now? Yeah. You're up in a bedroom. I don't know. It feels. It felt right. Conrad, it's not right. What you're trying to do is not right. What? He clearly doesn't have much going for him. I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to. As he's doing this, I want to shove the pen blubber in his like in his chest, like make him like try to hold it, and then just dash for the open door to the wing. Okay, Conrad, you let him go. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm a little frazzled. Okay, so he rushes guy. off. Dowell's running upstairs. I can't pick the... Oh. You pick the gun up? Well, maybe, yeah. Why don't I? And Sarah's just in her bed. She's so agitated. Make another power roll. Damn it! <laughs> he rolled a fumble on it. He wants you... He thinks you both need to go. He rolled two fumbles in a row. That's... It's a bad situation. Uh, 
82. So power is 70. Now this one you can either push or spend luck on if you want to. So am I trying to, what's the, uh, what does that mean if I roll above, it's a poor outcome basically? Basically, you don't have the willpower to resist what is being told to you. If you, I'll, I'll phrase it like this, if you stay at an 82, you're going to pick up a pillow and put it over Sarah's face. And... I'm just going to use some luck. Understood. All right, so, so go ahead and deduct 12 luck as you, as the, the, the feeling of the gun in your hand. And the worst part of this, Conrad, is there is some part of you that still feels like the right thing to do is to shoot her and to shoot Dowell, maybe even Siobhan at this point. Who knows? But something in Sarah's eyes reminds you of, I don't know, maybe one of the piglets that you guys thought wasn't going to make it, one of the runts that wasn't going to make it, but then it it wound up surviving through the winter, and, you know, it was wrong to maybe drown that one. So you guys, and it was a good thing you didn't drown it, so there's this party that's like, maybe I should give her a chance. A pig? Really? They're cute. Sarah's cute. I'm sorry, Sarah. I, it, I think I can understand how you felt earlier. You lost your mind. Uh, I mean, maybe, a, maybe a bit, but it, it felt like it made more sense. I mean, your head's all messed up, and I mean, Dowell, he, again, I mean, what? He doesn't even know who he is. But I, I mean, you're right. You're right. That it. Conrad, we don't want to die. We want to solve mysteries and find things out about ourselves. How could we do that if if you do what you were thinking of doing? It's quite the compelling point. I mean, that's how we started this all. I think I should apologize to Dal. Yes, and I think, I'm sorry to say, you've been downgraded from best friend to just very good friend. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I, I, I do understand. Maybe that will change one day, Conrad, and I do hope it does. But right now, I think we are just, we should just be very good friends. Boundaries are okay with me. How about we maybe see if Dowell's gonna go rush to his demise in a bathtub of swamp water? I don't know if I'm capable of moving, and I Sarah, don't know Sarah if I can't. Should. Sarah can't. I mean, Sarah can certainly try, but I won't. But I'll, <laughs> it'll it'll you'll have to roll a check to see if you can even walk. And honestly, like, no, thank you. You'll probably I roll will. a fumble, and that'll just that'll do her. That'll you know. Um, no. Dow. We'll as set you guys, the bell down, though. As you guys, con- as Conrad, if you contemplate going there versus leaving Sarah alone, Dow, you follow the footsteps. I do. Uh, once I hear that he's not following me, I won't be sprinting anymore. But I'm listening. You make it to the door. You hear the footsteps up the stairs beginning to turn. I follow. You follow. You follow at a distance, or are you still? You're not. You're not trying to sprint after them. No. The footsteps go down the hall, past the library, into the master bedroom, or the, the the main bedroom of this wing, Lorelei Lush's room. You hear them from within. What do you do? Can I look out the window? There are no windows inside the hallway. Right now, you're just like in the in the door. You you feel like footsteps have like you feel like maybe you heard a couple of footsteps echoing from within the master bedroom. Those double doors. You're not there yet. Mistress Lush, it's been quite some time since we've spoken. Is there anything you'd like to say from say to me? 
You're just calling from like not even the doorway, just like from the hallway. I'm I'm standing in the doorway. Oh, you step in the doorway. As you do so, you see a woman wearing a sort of sheer kind of like bathrobe type garment, just glancing at you slightly as she enters the bathroom. trying to think what the hell to do here. After a moment or two, she doesn't reply to your words, but she repeats, Footman, draw me a bath. I don't want to move yet. I want to just stand there in the doorway. Mistress, you disappeared quite some time ago. I was wondering, we were all wondering what happened to you. No response. I have so many questions. I was wondering if you could answer any. Actually. Faintly, but still audible to you with the fucking superhuman hearing. Um, You hear her sort of muttering something about, Oh, I say they can't, they say you can't find good help these days, I suppose. And then you hear this like glugging water sound. Glugging? Like. Mm, I'm gonna run into the bathroom. <laughs> you kind of run there as she's like, she's like taking off her, her bathrobe, and says, "Oh." I'm Dowel. She lets it drop. Mistress, you're going to keep me company as I bathe once again. This woman, she's tall. She has this like long black hair. She says, well, give me your hand then and help me in. Just like old times, right? Well, I hope I don't slip on my own then. She sort of puts like a hand on the side of the tub starts climbing into it. She splashes in. I suppose you're just going to stand there. You're not even going to fetch me my brush or my soap. What do you do in this situation? I'll walk over. Can I find her brush somewhere? It's funny. You don't recall any brushes and soap in here, but there's some sitting there now, yeah. Where they always were. (laughs) Something about this does seem familiar. Mm -hmm. Mistress, as I'm grabbing the brush, I want to be talking to her. I have no memory of anything four years prior to now. Could you tell me? What was I doing? What happened to me? What happened to you? I'm walking the brush over there. She reaches out for it. Kind of, you know, kind of like splashing some water up on her shoulder or whatever. You're really not being a very good footman, are you? She starts like, scrubbing her back 
in a odd way. She's kind of like, she makes a lot of eye contact with you as if it's just very normal. Um, and then she says, hmm. well, if you're not going to be good company, give me my book. She glances and sitting right next to where her brush and soap were. There's a leather bound tome. On the front of it is an X. And one, two, three eyes next to it. Roman numeral 13. We're going to cut away from this. Conrad, you said you were going up after him. Is that I, right? uh... I'm conflicted because I, I was unaware that Sarah could move. So I, I do want to ask her, can, can you walk around, get out of bed or? No, not at this point, Conrad. But please, do be careful. Even though you're not my best friend, you are still a very good friend. And I, I couldn't bear it if I lost another. Yeah. I hear that. I. I... I wouldn't want to be lost either. Um, you sit tight. I'm just going to go check on Dowell and make sure he's not making a bad decision. I, I feel bad for the guy. I, I shouldn't have done what I did. I understand. Be careful, Conrad. Please. You too, and don't don't go having any more of them dreams, you know, where you're dancing around and drinking blood. That's... It's not your style, I don't think. I mean, maybe it could be, but uh, anyway, uh, get some rest. I'll try. Conrad, with your revolver? Yes. You move out into the hall. There's an odd feeling. Again, you feel like you're being watched, but the door is still open ahead. You have the sensation that something is watching you right now. Uh, I want to do a spot hidden. Make a spot hidden roll. That is a hard success. A hard success. Conrad, you glance around and you're like someone here. You're looking in the doorways. And then as you turn to the middle of the hallway, sitting there, in the middle of the carpet is a little red-headed doll smiling at you. All by yourself, just sitting up. Does that evoke a feeling in me? I mean, does it? That's that's for you to say. If the if I, if you if you want to roll to see if you can sense something about it, you certainly can can do so. I mean, I I remember. Uh... You know, that was the same doll that smiled at me. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh... I'll tell you what, make a psychology roll. I've had people do this before. That was a fail. You have no idea what this inanimate object is thinking, which makes sense, because it is just a doll. Well, you may not is think it, that, but... Is it between, uh me in the door or is no, it behind? it's behind you it's like you're you're coming from the second door uh they're back in the first door this seems to be kind of like just just halfway across the room on a same plane as the doorway into the bedroom where siobhan and polly are waiting and Maisie's just smiling Maisie's having I don't... a good fucking day you guys <laughs> Con conrad doesn't quite like things watching and smiling at him and he's got <laughs> distrust for Siobhan and, and her doll and mm -hmm. you know I feel like you know he's driven by connection to people and sure. uh, he feels bad for what just happened with Dowell and he's maybe going to check that out later but for now it's just Correct. another weird thing wonderful Conrad you begin making your way up the stairs um, what is your listen score 
then you don't you don't you're not naturally hearing much you're just kind of moving up the stairs dowel she's asked you for this book you see it there i'll take it mm-hmm I'll hand it to her. Unless you'd rather read to me. Of course, mistress. Is that what you'd like to do? Hmm. There's a story in here Um. about a footman. I'd quite like to hear it. She kind of reclines, like, her arms sort of up, kind of lets her hair kind of, like, back there, kind of, you know. Um, okay. In that case, I was not fully ready for this, so allow me to, um, I'm going to email you something. Oh, no. Um, actually, I don't, I mean, I'm going to try this, but this doesn't even have to happen. Uh, cause at this moment, Dowell, as you're, as you're kind of about to open this book or whatever, she's like leaning back, you're still holding it. You do hear footsteps coming up the steps and through the hallway. Even out there with your, with your, uh, unless Conrad, you didn't say you were, you were sneaking or anything. So yeah, Dowell, you, you hear footsteps. I'll close the book. Oh, wait! Just one Footman. moment, mistress. Is someone I'll be right coming back. here? Is someone going to see me in the bath? That would of course be not, important. mistress. I'll stop them. Hmm. Conrad, I'll, you make it. I'll to sit see. the book. I'll sit the book down on the edge of the bath. Okay. And I'll Dowel. walk. You step kind of out back into the uh, uh, master just as Conrad gets there. Conrad, you see Dowell standing in the in the doorway to the bathroom, you know, kind of like just where when you guys first came in and saw John Hall sort of lurking. And if you remember, John Hall said something about seeing a naked woman or something. There was something odd going on with that. Yeah. But you're... You're there. Dowell, I... Uh, you here I to just tried to kill me again. I wanted to apologize. I mean, uh, I didn't, I don't, something came over me. I, I didn't mean to, I was really just trying to check if you had any bumps on your head that would explain your odd history. Uh, and it wasn't me. I, Explaining that you were trying to enact phrenology upon my skull is not a great explanation for pulling a pistol on me. I didn't quite know how that happened. I mean, maybe we can call it even a did save your life the other day and uh, <laughs> uh, just wanted to apologize and 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 also check in on you because you seemed uh, just a little too interested in uh, uh, whatever just happened back there and and I know this room I I've seen death in this room. I understand, Mister Bourgeois. I I appreciate the apology, but there's no reason to worry. I just I thought coming in here would jog some memories or something. Did, did you any of your memories get jogged? Have you seen anything? Uh, no. I can't say I have. Did you turn on the bath? I, I hope you didn't. I did not turn on the bath, no. Just for sure. Well. Why are you asking about the bath? Well, you remember big old What John makes you Holt? so interested in the bath? Uh, I splash, saw John Holt... Splash, splash, splash. You did the turn on the bath. Pained gasp. A pained gasp? I'm going to whip around and run back in. Conrad, are you running as well? I'm a little cautious. Understood. Uh, so Conrad just sort of stays there in the master. Dowell, you get to the edge of the master bathroom. I actually should have mentioned something. When she was stripping, 
there was one thing she kept on, which was this necklace. She was still wearing a necklace. You now see in the tub, which is full of brackish, muddy water, the decayed body of Lorelai Lush with this um, necklace around her neck. Uh, and she's now wearing what maybe looked like that, like kind of like like a, that nightgown plus another like dressing, like a sleeping gown. And she's there and she's dead and decayed. She looks like she's been dead a while. Her eyes are sort of been, the jelly of her eyes is kind of like floated out. And you see her for Who's a this? second. Make a sanity roll. Does this jogging memory is for doubt? Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Terrific. What's your current sanity at, buddy? She's at seventy. Seven zero. Seven zero. Oh, you're gonna be fine. Oh. Uh, well, you're sort of not going to be fine, Dowell, because you have lost enough sanity that that um, so you lose ten points of sanity. Um, as you see this, and there is this sudden feeling. I'll actually say yes, there is a memory here. Um, not so much that this is something you've seen, but a, a distinct notion that this is something you could have done something about. And all you want to do is go to her because you've lost more than five points, or because technically you've lost more than seven points of sanity at once, I am in control of your action right now. So, Dowell, you are compelled. You can sort of describe how you would do it, but you have to go to her. You have to grasp her. You have to try to get her out of there. I start, like, like I undo my time. There's, no There's no time for that. There's no time for that. You reach. Okay, I run. I run. You see Dowell the at the edge rush into the room conrad and then you hear a great splashing i i go in and dow what, what do you you get there i want you to make a spot hidden roll conrad i know you're good at it i want to push it because i failed okay push it oh push it please push it oh i got a uh, uh hard success Okay, so Conrad, you you make it to the door, and there's this almost like spray and splash of water that almost prevents you from seeing, but you sort of force your eyes open and look in, and you see something that defies all laws of physics. You see Dowell, like, reaching into this tub to try to grab this woman, and this water sort of splashing out this brackish water from the lake beyond, or, or not brackish, but kind of silty, and just from the lake, you see the lake water and, and full of plant and, and silt and mud and sticks and he's reaching in and then he and the water all just and the tub is clear and empty Dowell you find yourself in the dark and cold water and you feel yourself grasping that body the bones almost like brittle and hard in your hands, the flesh uh, no longer there, the, the garments completely soaked and, and almost disintegrating in the water. You feel that um, necklace almost floating against you, though you can't really see it. You are completely underwater. Make a constitution roll. Ninety-three. Ninety-three. You <gasps> breathe in instinctively, your lungs filling with water. You're choking. You're beginning to drown. You're beginning to panic. And that is when you feel against your back a hard, heavy hoof. And a voice speaks to you, not out loud, but in your mind, 
simply saying, Don't struggle. It's undignified. And Dowell, you feel yourself pushed away from the body, your grip uh, unable to pull it. You maybe shake it a bit, but soon you are being pushed down a dark chasm deeper and deeper into the water, bubbles rushing up past you, and you know that what is pushing you down is a black horse. You feel you have this one moment of before the black takes you completely, that you're, you're what you have no vision, but still your mind is tunneling. You have this feeling of one last chance, one last opportunity to sort of maybe communicate with this thing, this thing you have feared, this thing that is hounded and dogged you these four years when you've known nothing. Is there anything you want to ask? Can I look back and see the horse as it's pushing me down? Absolutely. You oh, glance shit. up at the horse. I want to look directly into its eyes. It's Very pushing good. Pushing me down into the you, water. You um, you know, the horse has previously told you you are you 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 do not deserve to see it at a previous time, but now in this final moment, you look up and look into the eyes of the horse. I want to get as close as I can, mentally or physically, and. Understood. In essentially, and say, I hope you choke on my corpse. And I'll fall into the water. Oh, Dowell, you are far too unworthy to be consumed. And then you feel the hoof piercing through you, and you feel nothing more. Conrad, you are standing up there. What are you doing? The tub is empty and pristine. Just shaking my head because I... I knew that would happen. I knew something bad would happen. I just walk back out. Conrad turns around, walks out of the room. The camera from within that room sort of kind of pans across, or really more like dollies across the door. There's kind of out of focus in the foreground. There's a, it seems like there's like a woman in a sheer bathrobe. And then as the camera continues, just sitting there on the edge of the bathtub, the Book of Thirteen. That's where we're ending tonight's session. Woo! Oh my god! And not only that, um, but what? I wasn't really sure of the timing of all of this, but I think in light of many things, um, because of that, we are also stepping away from Merkshire for a time. We will be back to Merkshire, and we are not stepping away from the characters, but, at least not entirely, you see, last week, a very complicated thing happened, which is that we had two individuals charmed to head to a plane, and I'm going to, t or to a domain, and I'm going to tell you guys this now. This is a, like, based on when I was plotting stuff. Okay. In October early November, I was rolling up, gee, what books might be at this house? And I rolled on my random list of my my 13 domains, and the one I rolled 
was a noir domain. This group went up and found those, and then they started, um, like, looking through these books, and they wound up singing a song tied to that plane and making contact with creatures from that plane. We are going to be cutting from this. We are going to be leaving Conrad and Siobhan and Sarah Quill and going to follow Rawlings and Sister Mercy. They have gone to Wendon and to let you guys just give you a bit of an understanding of what's happening to Wendon and beyond. Yes, we are going to be... Um, uh, so, so I say that this is insanely coincidental because in the intervening time, I started doing a, a pulp Kickstarter that then morphed into a noir Kickstarter. So next week, uh, so I'm not even sure I've mentioned this to you, Zane. You're going to be, uh, you're going to be a different character. Oh. Yeah. Conrad right. and Sarah and Siobhan, we'll come back to them for sure. Um, but we need to follow the other group here for a little while. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Um... So yes, next week we are be going to we are will be going to another domain of dread, one called Heistelis. Um in addition to that, uh Jeremy, uh with mm -hmm. the death of Dowell, you will not be joining us in Heistelis because on Tuesdays you will be joining us in another noir game yes. called Grey in the Dark. Kismet. That is Welcome uh, Raiders, by the way. Oh, welcome Raiders. Yeah, welcome, Hello. Welcome, Raiders. Hi. Hi Raiders. Uh we we did just wrap up uh tonight's game because um well, I killed someone. Killed someone. It was pretty <laughs> rough, too. I died isn't, horribly. Isn't it a dick move for a Dark Beautiful. Lord, for, like, you to try to say, like, one cool thing to the Dark Lord, and the Dark Lord to be like, no. It no, I'm... It trashed Dowell, though, because he's so pathetic. <laughs> it's like, you won't. He's like, I... he's like, eat you? I'm not eating you. You're nothing. I don't care, yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Wait, you, th you thought you're something I'd eat? No, no, you're like a Swiffer sheet, man. I wiped a couple things up with you, and now I'm throwing you away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yes, uh, so basically, we have a lot of fun noir stuff going on. On, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you all our games. We have, um, we have Here Be Dragons on Sunday. We have Temple Flight issue number one starting on monday that is the return of top flight our original game gonna be super fun uh we actually did like a recap of all the stuff from that okay cool so those are our non-noir games but then on tuesday we have chapter one of long lost noir gray in the dark a game in which they are in a world in which in order to win a horrible war there is no longer color a player in that game has actually told me by a text kj basically said so you're so you're breaking up with me as friends <laughs> That's how she framed uh, what what I did. Um, so that game's going to be really fun. That is featuring some of the cool noir classes that you can find in Long Lost Noir, which we have a Kickstarter of right now. Uh, we would love it if you could support that. But even if you can't support the Kickstarter, please um, share it with your friends. Uh, we're you know we're trying to meet our goal. I will also mention once again, unless I don't I don't think it uh, uh, was uh, claimed or anything yet. Uh, we have, I've added as an add-on, this is kind of, we're trying this out, uh, for the first session of Long Lost Noir, um, uh, Gray in the Dark, you can name the barkeeper um, at the uh, speakeasy where that game is taking place, because the party voted and they just wanted us to all meet in a speakeasy. Um, so if you, if you have backed the Kickstarter, you can go to manage rewards or manage products or something like that, and there's an add-on, there's only one of them. Uh, it is called um, Gray in the Dark, uh, Chapter 1 NPC Name. And basically, uh, I will, if, if anybody purchases that, I will get in contact with you. We will uh, allow you to name the barkeeper. I'll even let you pick, like, race and kind of their vibe and some of their history and stuff. There'll be a, there'll be a person in there. Not only that, uh, we will also mention that character somewhere in the book. Uh, if we wind up raising enough money, we'll, you know, maybe they're an NPC who gets illustrated. Otherwise, they'll be referred to somewhere. Uh, so you'll you'll have a mark in the book there as well. Um, yeah, we would so love it if people could go over to our Kickstarter, uh, pledge to that, or share the Kickstarter. It's super fun. The artwork in it is, uh, the preview art we have is so beautiful. It's actually also behind me here, but you can see it on the Kickstarter. It looks really cool. Um, so yeah, we're just really hoping to uh, uh, to to get as many uh, as many people backing that as possible. We still have a few weeks left. Um, I think we are just we're just shy of being uh, I guess like a third of the way. 
Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, mm-hmm. if we get like, uh, you know, a few, like a few more just normal of the books sold or whatever, I think we'll be at our, of uh, the pledges done. We'll be at like a third of the way there. So really hope we can yeah. do that. If Please share that D&D, with everybody. It's for you. It's really cool. And also check us out on, um, uh, Check us out on uh, both uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, kind of for the coming weeks, where you can see these classes fully in action. Um, and you can see the classes like the the Gumshoe, the Believer, the uh, the Spirit Medium. Um, on our Tuesday game, we're having two mannequin spirit mediums. So I don't know if the, I don't know how else to sell this game is to say that two people said we would like to be your mannequin race and the spirit medium class. So we're haunted. Uh, we're haunted things that are already terrifying. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be some super fun stuff. Um, we also have, uh, I want to thank everyone who raided tonight. I don't know, uh, um, Zane, if you have any of that jotted down or. Yes, uh, we had, uh, Jahan, wait, okay, sorry, this letters that confuse, Jahananan, Jahananan, uh, raided with a party of eight viewers and, uh, RFKS raided with a party of 12 viewers this evening. We had people cheering with bits and, oh. uh. It, we had a we had a fun night with y'all. So yeah, thank so you for coming out. Thank you and so also, much. Also, I would like to shout out Sam Howe because apparently he was here, but he was also in my TikTok answering questions, knowing that I couldn't answer there. So thank you so much. That is very kind to do. That is much appreciated. Um, well, thank you all uh, so much for watching this. I hope that this. Uh, I, I I hope that this creepiness sort of lived up to uh, last week because. Man, honestly, the past three weeks of this game have been, uh, there's been some stuff happening, and um, uh, I think that next, I think next week you're going to see a different kind of thing. Also, noir horror is um, is really upsetting, because in some ways, uh, uh, noir horror is one of the bleakest things, because it's just like... It's like noir is already so bleak. And to just put horror into it, it's just like, oh, God, it's so good. I'm so excited. Um, so, uh, yes, thank you everyone so much for watching. Check out our Kickstarter. Check out all our crazy streams. Um, I believe that we are now going to do a raid over to uh, Adventurers Pack, uh, who are some really good uh, f- uh, friends of ours. Uh, and they are they are they do a really cool uh, game over there, which I guess is still is still going on now, or they're or they're in their sort of post stuff. So I'm going to uh, attempt to send us in a raid over there. I'm going to be honest; I'm not the best at raiding. Uh, I don't really understand how to do it. So I hope that <laughs> I hope that my uh, I hope that my um, uh, I hope that all my key commands are good. So thank you so much. The Dread Clock sits at six. Next week, we will be in Heistelis uh, with some familiar characters and some new ones. Uh, also going to be real fun to see how uh, Sister Mercy and um, uh, and uh, Rawlings, how they transform from Call of Cthulhu characters into custom D&D classes. Going to be real we'll fun see. stuff. So please check all that out. Um, I'm going to hit this, uh, going to hit this raid thing. Hopefully this works. Um, but until... Uh, next time, for the last time from Merkshire for a little while, I will say, have a dreadful night. Ooh. All right, and I believe we are in our, uh, I believe that we are raiding. Um, I'm going yeah, to throw just over. some 13s and emotes and such into chat uh saying hello um and that was uh, fun and uh, uh we, so uh, also just so you guys know we are still recording uh what's happening now will still be on the uh recording of okay. the uh, for people who watch later because they don't go to the raid so to those people oh. we will also say uh good night and everything um, oh good night <laughs> This is for anyone who's watching after the fact. I'm 99. percent So you're saying I shouldn't like so. shout profanities? I mean, right now, shout I mean, plenty of profanities also, throughout the game. But, uh, when we raid, maybe we shouldn't put tombstones. <laughs> I don't care. They, you know what? They they know what we're about. Yeah. They uh, Scott and Abby know what we're up to. It's fine. All right, cool. Um, we will um we will see everyone next time. Have a dreadful night, day, or whatever period of time you are watching this. Bye bye. Thank you.